So looking at where the energy goes, let's, uh, I, I did a little, this is, these figures are very generic. But here is a, an office um, uh, base building. So those of you who have, have ever done a neighbor's base building rating, this is what we're looking at. And you can see that it's a little bit of lighting. That's the lighting for the common areas and the toilets and the foyer, but not the tenancies. And then a big lump of HVAC, because most of what you're doing for your tenants is providing air conditioning. And then um, a bit of lifts and a bit of other stuff. Okay. So when we're talking about base buildings, we're talking largely about HVAC. From the tenant's perspective, the problem is basically split between lights and office equipment. And it's one of those interesting areas when you look at the optimization of tenancy efficiency. It's like, how many things do you have to get right or indeed wrong with an office tenancy? And that is, how many lights you've got, how long they run how much equipment you've got, and how long it runs. And you can solve those four things, you've got an efficient tenancy. But because there's big behavioral elements in those, that can actually be quite hard. When we put the office base building and tenancy together, we get a picture that has a combination of lights, air conditioning, and tenant equipment. So if you're working with a whole building situation, where, for instance, you're the sole tenant of a, of a, of a large building or something like that, you get that sort of breakdown. And then hotels are another case in point. You can see we've got a lump here, a large lump of about 50% is air conditioning, reasonable amount of lighting. Hotels love their lights, particularly if they're small, glary, and inefficient. That makes them feel happy, because that's what the architects told them, it looks good. We have a, a reasonable amount of other, because uh, our hotels have significant amount of um, services associated with catering equipment. Um, little, you know, uh, bar fridges in rooms, um, all this sort of stuff, is, uh, and, and a small amount on lifts. So you can see when we're looking at, at this, in all categories other than office tenancy, air conditioning dominates. And in fact, as it's a rule of thumb. If you're walking into a, a building uh, of just about any type, there's a good chance that the air conditioning is at least half the energy consumption of the building, from what almost, from, from almost from whatever way you look at it. So it's always worth starting with the air conditioning. So air conditioning consists of a whole bunch of stuff. Um, now, I don't know how, many, how many people here are un totally unfamiliar with air conditioning technology? Moderately familiar with air conditioning technology? Yeah. Experts in air conditioning technology? <laughs> Go away. <laughs> um, OK. So. I'll, I'll try and pitch it at the right, at the right level. Um, we've got a whole bunch of stuff that makes up air conditioning technology. Of course, the, the mix varies from building to building. We have chillers, cooling towers, boilers, cogen and trigen, fans and pumps, package units, a control system, and a few other bits and pieces. Okay, so we, I'm going to look at this from a, the point of view of a whole bunch of little pieces this time around. But before I head into that, just bear in mind that actually one of the things that matters most with air conditioning is not actually how the individual pieces work, but how they all work together. Okay, that's actually a much more difficult question than getting the individual pieces working. 